Hey, what's up guys? This is Afak from Full Stack Networker. Today I want to take a few minutes to go over the new Cisco DevNet certification program, associate and professional tracks with several exams that are part of it now, and what it takes to prepare for them. I will also walk you through a coding lab at the end of this video, so stick around. Be right back. Welcome back. Just to recap, Cisco announced DevNet program back in June this year at Cisco Live in San Diego after tinkering around with DevNet initiative for about five years. Like network side of things with CCNA and CCNP tracks, DevNet program also contains associate and professional tracks with several exams depending on the certification level. At the time of announcement, Cisco said that there will also be an expert track. So what are we talking about here? Cisco certified DevNet expert, a CCDE 2.0. I think it will be a while before an expert track is rolled out. So don't hold your breath for that one. Last but not least, take note that all new DevNet exams are scheduled to go live come February 24th, 2020 or less than four months from now. Now, as Simon Sinek says, start with your why. So let's start with Cisco's why. Why did Cisco announce DevNet certification program to begin with? Well, Cisco knows like every other networking vendor that networking hardware and even software have now become commoditized thanks to cloud that made owning infrastructure a stupid thing of the past. And likewise, SDN that helped us move and propel away and forward from black boxes with proprietary operating systems to mostly branded white boxes with highly programmable operating systems such as Arista EOS or Cumulus Linux. Now keep in mind that Cisco did not arrive at this conclusion overnight. Obviously their profit margins were tied up into infrastructure and they still are, but they seem to now have embraced subscription based pricing model and the stock market has rewarded them for it by sending the price, the stock price back to where it was 20 years ago. Anyhow, with DevNet, Cisco is hoping to turn their products into platforms where they can focus on providing the APIs and let the infrastructure and application software developers do the integration work. Now, Cisco claims that they have well over 500,000 members enrolled already into their DevNet uh, program. Obviously, a lot of them come from channel partners and Cisco has a massive channel partner or go-to-market arm. So what I also noticed is that Cisco is walking a fine line here with the announcement of DevNet certifications. They're not going all out and saying network engineers should all become developers or that developers should consider becoming CCIEs. Obviously, they don't have all the answers themselves. So moving on, the most critical question is where does it and what does it mean for you as a network engineer? So regardless of what Cisco's party line is, DevNet certification program represents a tremendous opportunity for you to graduate out of being a networker to an automation engineer or a network DevOps. So what am I talking about? Embrace the cloud and the automation wave. Learn obviously DevOps tooling ecosystem to stay relevant in the shifting job market as well as to advance and propel your career forward. If you choose not to, and I bet in about five years from now, there may not even be a job role known as a network engineer, meaning a generalist, someone who can, somebody looking for who can come in and hand configure router switches and firewalls, right? I think you get the idea. For now, you have two choices. You can target associate or professional track, much like the new CCNP track where CCNA is no longer a prerequisite. DevNet associate is not a qualification requirement for DevNet professional track either. Let me unpack these for you. If you are clueless about programming, DevOps and encoding formats such as JSON or XML and APIs, then you want to start with the associate track. But if you find yourself writing Python code during downtime, or perhaps you came from a coding background like I did, then you can venture straight into the professional track. Another way to figure this out is to simply read through the associate exam topics that Cisco has published on learning network. If you find a lot of unfamiliar jargon in it, i.e. within the exam topics, then congratulations, you have hit the jackpot and that's the place you need to start. 
Now, I personally think most network engineers would want to start at the associate level. And Cisco has published as part of the announcement, um, I think they're really about two roles that the in terms of the job um, roles, the DevNet program actually, I think, addresses. So one is the network automation engineer role and the other is network DevOps. So where associate and professional tracks control for basically level of expertise. So you can uh, think about like uh, as a beginner uh, network DevOps or a beginner automation engineer or an intermediate junior, senior, what have you, right? Now, you can become Cisco certified DevNet associate or CCDA by just passing Dev ASC 200901 exam. This exam is about APIs, infrastructure, um, deployment, software development principles, and obviously knowing your network fundamentals, i.e. knowing your protocols and some of the bits and bytes. DevNet professional track or path to CCDP requires passing not just one, but two exams. You need to pass one core exams, i.e. Dev Core 350-901 and one of the eight concentration exams. The only key difference between the two exam topics, i.e. associate exam topic versus DevNet core exam uh, profess for professional track is really the level of difficulty as far as the knowledge domains are concerned. So the domains are about the same, it's just the level of difficulty. And obviously the professional track or dev core exam does not contain fundamentals. So you're supposed to know obviously your uh, networking devices and your networking protocols if you are targeting professional track. As far as con concentration exams go, Cisco has offered eight exam choices and all you need to do is to pick one from either of these lists. So if you are familiar with DevOps tooling ecosystem, then you can pick DevOps, right? Likewise, if you find yourself deeply interested in pursuing network automation, then you can go for the enterprise exam. So I would say those are the two of my personal favorite exams out of the eight that Cisco has provided. Now let's double click into each exam area or section. Uh, now you can see they are pretty evenly divided across the two levels. Obviously, since there is no network fundamental section in Dev Core exam, Cisco folks simply peanut buttered that 15% into the APIs, apps and deployment and infra infrastructure automation sections. Now, what's more interesting is if you look at each of the keyword that each of the line item starts with. So within the exam topics for each track, right? So these should be very familiar to you if you, are if you have taken any Cisco exam before. The red box indicates the topics that I consider purely conceptual. Call it theory if you want. Now it gets more interesting if you look at the green box. Those keywords inspire action. I involve some kind of hands-on and that's where you can see real divergence between associate versus professional track. Associate only seems to include about 9% hands-on where professional track clocks in uh, with about half of the exam topics requiring hands-on. While I would like to see more hands-on included into the associate track right off the bat, but Cisco kind of makes it up for it by not requiring um, associate as a prerequisite for professional track. So I think enough said for that. Just for fun, I thought why not compare it, all of this with new CCNA and CCNP exam topic uh, that Cisco also announced as part of the, the big announcement that came out in the, in, the, in the month of June. And you can see that DevNet tracks edges out both CCNA and CCNP for hands-on. Good on you, Cisco. Now, perhaps the most critical part, how can you get started? Well, as cliche as it may sound, there are always two choices, right? Uh, the red pill or the blue pill. I'm just kidding. So obviously you can do do it yourself way or shall we say doing DevNet the hard way. Anyhow, if that picks your interest, then I've broken down the actual domain of knowledge uh, for you that you need to master in order to get DevNet certified. Now, obviously, the foundation of it all is still networking, but then the meat of it is around the programming, which is mostly Python and corresponding Python libraries, DevOps toolchain with tools 
um, that you need to know, for example, build server, right? Like such as a Jenkins or a drone. And then becoming familiar with infrastructure APIs and application deployment uh, processes and, 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 and the actual uh, principles behind. You can create your own syllabus and Google every topic until you are ready. That's the do-it-yourself way, right? Now, if you prefer the structured um, approach to learning, then we have done the research for you. And you can get it started today by hopping over to fullstacknetwork.com. Uh, we have published DevNet Associate course already uh, last week where DevNet Professional Core uh, is, 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 is waiting uh, in the wings. We're working on the DevNet Professional Core exams right now. So now let's see how it works uh, with this approach, right? So first, we follow Cisco's DevNet Associate official blueprint to make learning and managing your progress super easy for you. So all of our coding examples for, uh, are posted on, on GitHub um, in the form of GitHub GIS. So you can follow all the examples included within our course material like the one shown here. Once you learn the concepts, you have to obviously put it through the paces without exception. So we use cloud hosted Python IDE where you can execute your code without leaving your lesson. So we have way more code example than Cisco intended for associate uh, course within the exam topics. What am I talking about? 9% hands-on um, in my mind is not enough uh, to make a foray into a new area. So we have tons of code for you to build um, on the fly, basically execute on the fly for you, right? All code is preloaded in those uh, snippets. So all you have to do is to hit that green button to execute and see the output in the terminal while you are still on the on on the lesson that you are on right so if you want to modify the code you can fork it that's basically chinese for making your own code copy uh, so have at it last but not least each section has a practice quiz to benchmark your learning and concept comprehension so as DevNet exams go live, we will be adding exam simulation um, or timed practice quizzes that help you prepare to deal with the real pressure of a, of a Cisco exam, right? Or in this case, DevNet Associate. We have covered quite a bit of ground here. So let me summarize. Number one, DevNet certification program offers two tracks, Associate, call it an entry level. And the next step up to that is professional track, right? While Cisco does not explicitly say so, network engineers, please pay attention to this if you don't want to witness your job getting automated. Associate ex requires passing one exam, whereas professional track requires passing two exams. Last but not least, regardless of the track, the knowledge domains for DevNet can be broken down into these five areas. Now, Time for a small lab. So today we're going to, going to cover the first two line items mentioned in, in the DevNet associate track uh, with an XML example. So our uh, XML document has three elements or nodes, and then each of these elements have two sub elements, right? So every element is a node, but not every node is going to be an element as there are a bunch of other types of nodes that exist. So this is, this is the exam topic that are taken from uh, DevNet Associate exam. And as you can see, we're addressing the first two. And this is our example XML file. So if you have ever looked at an HTML file, it looks very sim similar. Because HTML is just a, a standardized version of um, XML for the web application. All right. So now moving on. What we're going to do is we're going to we're going to parse this XML file, or you can also do it for an XML string, for example. Then we call it persons.xml, and I'm going to show you in a second in the actual cloud hosted ID that I referred to earlier. So first thing we do is we initialize. Basically, we initialize we parse XML file, and initialize our XML tree. All right. So this happens using elementary library then basically what we do is we print we print the number of elements and sub elements in our xml tree and we actually print the whole tree as well 
just as an example. And this is where that happens. And then um, just keep in mind, finally, obviously, we print out the actual values associated with those um, elements and sub-elements. And I'm going to show you them in a, in a real time. But tag is a concept in, in XML or HTML as well. And tag is basically what you put between less than and greater than signs. And the actual tag value is what's within the opening and closing tags. All right. So in our example, gender and name are sub element tag, as you can see. Right. So there this is your element. And then you have two sub element tags. Now, all this out of the way, let's move to the fun part and execute our code by pressing that green button that I showed you earlier. So you can see the code executed first it does is this is all this all happens in the background obviously this is just the prep work and then we print out the whole uh, xml document which is persons.xml and this is the actual document and then we pr print out basically the number of elements which is three in this case because we got uh, jeff bezos elon musk uh, and jessica alba and then we basically go through the the elements print out the number of elements which is three because we have three of those and then each element has two sub elements which means gender and name so we print those out so this, this is just the count of those and then the actual values are printed out here all right so what we do is basically we use dot tag and dot text to print out their their actual tag and the value within those tags as well so you can see uh, gender male name Elon Musk. All right, so that's just a super sim simple example uh, And I hope you found this discussion and this is small lab useful uh, Link to this code is is in the description below in case if you want to tinker around and and you know play with it add Something different to it. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing and hearing from you at full stack networker. So until we meet next time. Ciao